Hey guys and welcome back to Honeycomb Manila. My name is Keo and today we're going to be brewing a very special coffee. This is the Mabini Obuan Natural Robusta. It's roasted by the good cup and it's actually grown right here on the island of Luzon. If you flip it over you see on the back it says roasted in Cebu and the best coffee is the coffee that suits you and a, and a little bit more. It's interesting that they use that word best um, because this coffee is actually award winning. And I want to tell you a bit more about that but I decided that today's coffee, we're going to brew it kind of in the style of a brewer's cup. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the coffee and hopefully as I make it, I can tell you more about it. And if I miss something, then maybe we can go back right at the end and wrap it up. You ready? Let's go. So grinding our coffee today, I'm using the Brazza Seti 270. Now the reason I love this grinder is because the grind distribution is very nicely evenly distributed between fines and boulders about 50 50 and that results in a higher amount of surface area for the fines which is going to work really well for our coffee today now for you to see i'm going to put a little bit of the grinds here on this little saucer so hopefully this gives you an idea of just how kind of medium fine our grind consistency is for this brew for our brew today, we're going to be doing immercalation, which is a brew method that I invented. The purpose of immercalation is to give a complete uh, saturation of the grounds prior to the percolation process. So it's immersion and then percolation. And what we found is that this results in a very consistent brew every time and a very even extraction. However, since our coffee today is a Robusta, we're gonna be making a few changes to the recipe. First, usually with the immercalation, we're brewing all the way at about 96 degrees Celsius, and today we're bringing that down to 89 degrees Celsius. So we put 15 grams into the vacuum jug, and now we are going to add another 100 ml of water into there. Now we're going to seal that up until we get to about a minute 30. I'm going to give it a little swirl, make sure everything is wet inside and we just wait. Now while we're waiting, I'm actually going to turn the kettle back on so that it heats up back to 90 degrees, uh, to 89 degrees Celsius, just to make sure that we have a consistent brew temperature. Now the reason why we want for that to be very consistent is because we're going to be using a cool V60, meaning we already wash and rinse this paper and we're not going to preheat it because we're expecting that the temperature coming out of the vacuum flask will be relatively high and we need to adjust for that given that this is a Robusta. So we're now at 103 seconds. I'm going to give this a swirl and when we get to 115 seconds, I'm going to decant it at an angle into our plastic V60. Tear the scale and what we're looking to see is that we get to 115 grams of cough, uh, of slurry and since we're not there yet I'm just going to add a little bit of water into the jug again and pour that out and so now we have no more coffee inside of the jug I'm just going to take that and put it to the side now our coffee's been draining down we're at 144 ml of coffee in total. Our total brew slurry, water, and coffee will be at 240. So that means we're gonna be adding another 100 ml. We're coming up on two minutes and 10 seconds. When that happens, I am gonna start adding liquid again. So I'm using a relatively turbulent pour to try and get a lot of the water in there before we get to two minutes and 30 seconds. So we got there exactly. Two minutes, 27 seconds, we're at 240 ml of coffee. Now, the reason why I did not wait for the slurry to drain the way that we usually do is because since this is a Robusta, I want for the coffee not to settle, but to really um, be moving around inside that slurry when I pour in the remaining coffee during that percolation phase. Coming up on 56, when I get to three minutes, I'm gonna give it a quick tap. Just to kind of even things out there. 
we're going to let that drain down and draw through the rest of this coffee. And that is a mercolation. Now let's talk a little bit about this coffee. It is a Robusta, but it's grown at an unusually high elevation at 900 meters above sea level. Now that is some commitment on behalf of, um, of the producer. The name of the producer is Mabini Obuan. That's actually his name. And he's from Ilocosur. It does take some commitment to do that because at 900 meters above sea level, you really could be making a Arabica coffee or an Arabica coffee. And he's, uh, you know, he's allotting space to make a Robusta. So he's taken that Robusta and he's actually made a very pure natural. There's no fermentation. There's nothing extra done. He just picks the cherries really ripe and drops them immediately on to drying beds. And I learned that from another YouTube video that was produced by the roaster of this coffee, the Good Cup Coffee Company. I'm going to put that link down in the comment section down below. I'm going to pin it and you guys can click on it if you want to learn more about that. So dripping has pretty much stopped at 4 minutes and 30 seconds. There's a few little drips there, but pretty much we're done brewing. All right, so now with my chopstick, I'm just going to give a little whip up into this coffee get everything stirred and well integrated and now let's taste the coffee color it's a nice light brown not super red but there's some redness to it let's give it a sniff on the nose fruity uh, sweet it's not nutty the way a traditional robusta is in fact, there's like no nuttiness at all in this coffee. Sweet, acidic notes in terms of flavor, but as this is a Robusta, you can expect it to be lower in acidity than, you know, an Arabica coffee or other forms of coffee. Mm. All right, let's give it a sip. So there's like a chocolate um, brownie taste that's kind of lingering. But around it, there's actually some fresh stone fruit flavors. Um, things like grapes and rambutan can be tasted in this coffee. And I think one of the most um, one of the most telling things about it is that there's no trace of nuts in it at all. It doesn't taste like peanuts. It doesn't taste like cashews. It doesn't taste like peely nuts. None of those flavors are present in this coffee. It's all just uh, juiciness sweetness and even when you come into flavor notes that are reminiscent of chocolate has a very tablea finish um, once you get into those notes those are not uh, those are not traditionally nutty flavors or even traditional coffee flavors like it's not you know what we would refer to as like a baker's chocolate or a semi-sweet chocolate this is very clearly a tablea All right, maybe you're not from the Philippines. Maybe you don't know what Tablea is. Tablea, uh, we are actually, aside from being a coffee-producing country, we're also a cacao-producing country. A lot of the great cacao that you get from Belgium, Switzerland, they all they are, do originate here in the Philippines. Not all of it, but a lot of them do, right? So one of the products that we produce from the cacao that we use to make uh, hot chocolate and other, other chocolate-based uh, drinks is an unsweetened processing of the cacao and we call it tablea and that's exactly what this tastes like as it cools as it finishes but on the nose bright red grape fresh sweet coffee i promise this is something that you need to try this is something that is redefining robusta and every time i see uh, someone posts one of these infographics or, or explanations about what Robusta is. Um, I always, well, I try to comment as much as I can and say that I'm finding that more and more that that is outdated when you have coffees like this. And that previous El Union coffee was grown at a lower elevation and um, was well processed, but not this well processed. This is something else. Um, but that Bagulin forest is actually very close to Ilocos Sur. Like, um, if you were not from that area, you would just kind of think that they're kind of in the same area. I think one of the most important things and one of the most interesting things that we're seeing out of this recent um, wave of Robusta coffees is that what we're seeing is that 
producers and farmers are responding to the market. And, you know, people saying that you can have a great Robusta, um, that you can have delicious single origin coffees that taste like this, that for me can very much compete with some of the best specialty Arabica coffees in the market today. I think that that shows a very bright future for our country, for the production of coffee here, and for a new, deeper understanding of what Robusta is and what it can be. And that is the Mabini Obuan Robusta coffee. It's not bitter at all. Um, if you're familiar with where the bitterness in coffee comes from, oftentimes that really does come from the caffeine. Um, and that's why the, the Robustas tend to skew bitter in the way that they're prepared but this one is not bitter um, at all really like even that chocolate tablea bitterness is not really bitterness it's like a tablea um, it's like the sweet notes of a tablea um, what you would find ending up in a brownie um, that's the flavor that you are getting here so I wonder if there's really much caffeine in here I'd really like to know uh, and with that, I'd like to know your thoughts. Have you tasted any great Robustas lately? I'm really excited. This year we've had two here on the channel that have been delicious and really good, really delicious coffees. Uh, the last one was just in June. So 2021, great year for Philippine coffee, great year for Philippine Robustas. I also had one of my favorite uh, Arabicas from the Philippines this year, roasted also by El Union. It was the Tublay Natural, I believe, and that one also tasted of grapes. Now, while this tastes like fresh uh, red grape, that one tasted like kind of like a Welch's, like, <laughs> like a produced grape juice, right? Like a processed grape juice. Uh, and if you have the ability to purchase coffee, do patronize both A Good Cup and El Union. They both have great selections for Robusta and Arabica and for Philippine coffees. Keep supporting. We have another video coming up about Philippine coffee. We do have another coffee from Sergio Luan, also produced by uh, the good, uh, also roasted by the good cup. And you might have noticed that we have the Bambino Plus over here on the side. And uh, we are going to be releasing, or we might already have released the video for this. Um, we did a review on the Bambino Plus from Breville, a great little machine. Follow along on Instagram. I am at KO Caution Instagram. Follow at Honeycomb Manila, our studio here in Double Dragon Plaza. And follow at Daily Drink Mag, which is our blog where we catalog all the things that we do in drinks, beverage, coffee, cocktails, you name it. I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. I wish you guys great coffee. Peace.